At that moment, I could scarcely recall how the situation presented itself. My friend and I waiting in that room for what could have spelled out certain doom, a fear that was put into my mind by one C. Auguste Dupin, self-proclaimed detective, expert in ratiocination. My friend, one who could easily fill me with feelings of stupidity, naivety. You've grown quiet. Have I filled your mind with feelings of stupidity and naivety once again? <gasps> Absolutely not! Ah, then it's fear that fuels your stupor. I beg your pardon! You needn't worry, my dear friend. If I am correct in my assumption, this intervention will swiftly cease our city's murderous dilemma. Hmm. If I'm wrong, our ends will be equally swift. Our ends? My god, Dupin, you asked me over for a cup of tea. And the tea you shall have. Tea is what you should concern yourself with for the moment. For if I've made the correct assumption with the noise I've just heard downstairs, you'll want to remain in your seat. Mm -hmm. The next few moments seemed interminable. I began to think back on my friendship with Dupin, and the many similar instances such as this that we had shared before. How did this one begin? Surely when my friend had spotted the news of the grisly murders in the paper, the real trouble started with his insistence on helping the professionals solve their case. Who are you? I ain't supposed to wear no one in under no circumstance. I assure you this is no circumstance indeed. I am an acquaintance of the Prefect of Police. He assured me that I would be admitted. The Prefect, you say? I do say. Should I send for him? Huh. That's all right. If you dare, sir. It's quite grisly. People heard screaming and called the police. When we arrived, the door was still locked and the key was still on the lock on the other side. The windows was closed and locked from the inside. There was no sign of the murderer. This one was stuffed in the fireplace like it was Christmas. Might I offer that you have a strange sense of Christmas? Cause of death was strangulation. Must have been a mighty big man to do something like that. A man with hands that large must have been eight feet tall if he were ten. Hmm. If it was a man at all. Surely a woman couldn't have. Don't be foolish. Show me the blade. That bit of hair does not match the victims, waiting us to fake it must be to kill us. The ingenuity of your department must be applauded. I assume your inspectors also determined the color to be orange. Well, yes, sir. Do you not see what sits before you? <laughs> They must not require to define the word sarcasm during one's tenure at the police academy. Sarcasm, sir? What be quite good at swordplay? Where is the second victim? She must have been homely in her time on this earth. Hmm. Surely death adds ten pounds. It's nice to see one with a stomach for one's work. Has the body been touched since discovered? No, sir. We did it if it was proper. Hmm. There's something queer about that one's neckline. Would you mind turning her on her front, constable? Aye, if that was you require, sir. sliver of skin holds its head to its body. It must have taken colossal strength to sever the spine with such a razor. Please, Dupin, 
The constable can barely control his candy. Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, sir. I do apologize, good sir. I must ask you, as soon as you change your shoes, to round up the witnesses for our perusal. I'd like to hear their tales. I was one of the first ones up the stairs when I heard the screaming. First her, then somebody else screamed. That second scream must have been Italian. I'm an Englishman, yes. Kick that door in when I heard the screams. That second yell was definitely a Frenchie. I don't know if it was a man or a woman's cry. If it were a woman, she had a husky voice, I would say. I am Garcio. I live in the Rue Morgue. When I heard those sounds, I do not go up the stairs with the others. No. I lived next to a Frenchie for two years. Definitely could pick that voice out anywhere. It definitely wasn't the woman that lived there. Or her daughter. Mm-hmm. What I hear last, though, I never forget. An Englishman. He screamed like he'd been stabbed in the... Uh, you know. I've never heard an Italian speak, but that's what I figure it sounded like. It's crazy, but that's what I heard. Either that or it was a German. I don't know. I'll be the first to confess. I just don't get it. Your confession is superfluous. There's just no motive. There is no way for one to have come and gone in such a manner. The witnesses were on the scene instantly. It's almost supernatural. Surely these women were not destroyed by spirits. When we figure the obvious, the picture begins to sharpen. Someone mm. probably scaled the building and entered through some open window, leaving through the same window which locks upon closure. A self-locking window? Is there such a thing? Surely there is in the Rue Morgue. Did you not look at the frame? I feel foolish. We'll talk of that later in more detail. Now we must discuss the remaining vexatious components. Primarily the fact that the killer possesses marvelous strength. Having such to choke the life out of a woman before shoving her body up a chimney. And that strange cry heard by all but identified by none. I wonder. And now you're up to speed, as they say. Dupin remained quiet for the remainder of our stroll home. He phoned up my rooms not an hour after my arrival, insisting on my attendance at his pivotal moment, as he described it. I now await this moment with a pistol and an empty cup of tea. Does your glass require refilling? I... I'm fine. Well, you should not complain about something and then refuse the remedy. I'm sorry, I just... Don't shush. The moment is nigh. I don't understand. I believe I understood it perfectly. The climbing, the strength, the hair. The perpetrator is certainly not a spirit, as you and the constable once surmised, but he is also not of humanity. I dare say, Dupin, the messes you bring me into. One must consider the strength of the culprit. The wild, inhuman orange hair. Its ability to scale the side of a cobblestone building. If I were to ask you to name an animal with abilities to accomplish such strengths, which would you name? Are you baiting me? No. Answer naturally, of course. Why, either a maniac, or I suppose, an ape. One half of your assumption is precisely correct. And where do you figure you'll stumble onto an ape? Surely not the Rue de Berry. Why no? I assume they are closest to the West Indies. Perhaps Barbados. Now that you've boarded my train of thought, I'll mention that I've placed an ad in last week's column, advertising a large ape that I have found and now maintain. Hm. Last week? You mean? Yes, I suspected this, even then. Now we have the fortune of meeting a man in search of a lost ape. 
A man who I think has the ability to travel to the West Indies and back. The door is not latched. May we help you? Yeah, I must apologize, but I don't have time for pleasantries. Are you the ones who have my ape? Apologies accepted, sir. But with all pleasantries aside, we are the ones who have you. Pardon? That is up to the lords of the land to do now, I'm afraid, sir. We know the deeds that dwell in your past. I don't know what you mean. Surely you recall the ape you brought to this country aboard your ship? Just what are you getting at? To play coy is for children. Your ape somehow escaped and spread its rampage throughout the Rue Morgue. Much to your knowledge, I suppose. As much as you regret, you are unable to locate the creature and fear its eventual connection to you and your ship. Am I correct? It was all a mistake, see? I bought this orangutan from a medicine man on one of my journeys. It was a funny little thing. Watch me play cards, shave, do people stuff. It loved watching me. One night it just goes crazy, lunging out of its cage when I went to feed it. It took my razor, nearly slashed my throat, left the ship toward the city. I chased it for hours. I heard the screams. When I saw what it had done, I vowed that I would kill it when I found it. I've got my wages to think about. My family. And now I guess I'll do the same thing to you. You would assume that a man who has devised a brilliant plan such as yours would have the foresight to think just a few steps ahead. Hmm? I just don't know anymore. If I were a lesser man, I'd shoot you right now for sport. Evidence would support my calls. I appreciate that. I guess we've got a monkey to find, huh? Apes are more intelligent creatures than the monkeys. I'm sure you'll remember that fact from now on. Dupin! I'd be a liar if I did not tell you that this is the best cup of tea I've ever had. Oh, but you must try it with sugar. It's a far more interesting addition. Ha 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 